Hey, it's Sam Billido with Billido Services, and today I wanted to share some thoughts about what it's like to work with Dolby Vision HDR shooting on the iPhone 12. Now, when Apple announced the iPhone 12 and said that it was gonna have Dolby Vision video, I had two big questions that I wanted to answer. The first one was, how does it work? What are they actually doing to get Dolby Vision into the files that they're shooting with? And then two, is it any good? I've been working in HDR for a number of years now. I've used cameras all the way up from red monstros down to GH5s, mastered them in HDR. I've tested the iPhone 11 in HDR using Filmic Pro and their Filmic Log. I got some okay results out of that, but I really wanted to see is the iPhone 12 any good? Is it worth spending money on this feature if you're a filmmaker looking to work in HDR? Let's answer the first question first. How does it work? Now, what Apple's actually done to get Dolby Vision shooting on this phone is pretty incredible. So the way that this works is that the iPhone is actually shooting in hybrid log gamma. That's not Dolby's flavor of HDR, and it's not the version of HDR I recommend for filmmakers to master it, but it's actually a really good acquisition format. It's comparable in dynamic range to a lot of different camera log formats. But what's great about HLG is that it's cross compatible with SDR, which means if I take my iPhone files that have shot in HDR and I send them to a phone or to a screen that doesn't work in HDR, it's gonna give me a really nice SDR rendering of that content just because of the HLG essence. What's great about shooting in this format is it's a really great balance between the compatibility and the quality. Hybrid Log Gamma is gonna give you that really nice dynamic range while still keeping it compatible with SDR content. But that's not the only thing it does. It's gonna be doing all of the Dolby Vision metadata analysis in real time and storing that, embedding that in the file. And the Dolby Vision is gonna make sure that when you're on a Dolby Vision enabled device, it's gonna take that and it's gonna adapt it to the characteristics of the display and it's gonna give you a really, really great rendering of that image. When I open up Media Info to see what I'm seeing, that's what I see, HLG transfer function, Dolby Vision base layer plus RPU, which is the Dolby Vision metadata. This is a Dolby Vision Profile 8 file, which means that if you play it back on any screen, even if it doesn't work with Dolby Vision, it should work with this file. But if you're a pro filmmaker like me, the question becomes, is that actually something that's worth using? I did a couple of dynamic range tests with it. One in my front room where I had measured that I had about 10 stops of dynamic range in front of the camera. And the Dolby Vision HDR on the iPhone was able to capture detail all the way through the highlights, all the way down into the lows. In a couple of tests that I did outside, it seemed like it was actually capturing closer to 12 or 13 stops, which is an incredible amount of dynamic range for the phone that I carry in my pocket. Under normal lighting conditions, it looks pretty good. It does add a little bit of compression artifacting. If you're shooting in the default Apple camera, uh, it adds the sharpness that you'll see. The low light does get a little bit noisy, but I wanna emphasize that these images that I'm showing you right now were shot when it was so dark that it was almost hard to see any detail. And the iPhone was able to capture them. Now I am getting some contouring, some strange flattening of the image in places, but overall, this in a pinch, this would be a usable image that I could use as a little bit of B-roll somewhere. And that's basically in a no light situation where I'm just using a very, very tiny amount of ambient light at night. Of course, in daylight, I'm getting a huge amount of dynamic range. If you look at the amount of detail I've retained in the brights, the mids and the darks, this is just an incredible platform to grab a quick HDR shot whenever I need it. Filmic Pro is fully enabled to shoot in Dolby Vision. Now, when you turn on Dolby Vision for the first time in Filmic Pro, it sets up this warning saying like, warning, this bakes in a look, but it actually doesn't. When I take those files and I bring them into DaVinci Resolve, I'm able to use DaVinci Resolve's color space converter and treat it as if it's an HLG scene rendering instead of doing an HLG display rendering. What that allows me to do is basically retrieve what the iPhone saw in the same way that Filmic Pro's log does. But the great thing about this is that when I'm shooting in Filmic Pro, I'm shooting in 10 bits, which means my gradients are gonna retain a lot of detail. If I switch over to Filmic Pro log, it only shoots 
in 8-bit, and that makes a really big difference in how my scenes are rendered. Now, a couple of little notes that I found with the iPhone HDR. First is it works with all of the cameras. In fact, I'm shooting this on the front-facing camera on my iPhone 12 Pro Max. Two, if you're using the Pro Max, it's in-body image stabilization. It really helps eliminate the jitter. It really helps give you smoother pans than you could get by hand alone. And again, that feature is enableable in Filmic Pro. The biggest problem that I've actually have run into is the lens flares at night. As with all of the iPhones, they don't have a particularly great anti-reflection coating on the lenses, which means that when you're shooting in HDR at night, you get these really bright lens flares that are moving around the image and can be very distracting. Anyway, I hope that this quick little review of the Dolby Vision HDR capture on the iPhone 12 helps you if you're trying to decide to use this as an HDR capture platform. My personal opinion, I think it's great for the independent market, and I think it's gonna open up a lot of options for creatives and independent creatives looking to capture and shoot in HDR. This is something new that I'm trying, so if you want to see more little vlogs like this, reviewing some of the HDR tech from an HDR professional who's been working in HDR for about five plus years at this point, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and I hope to have a couple more videos out too soon. Huh, I can use my watch as a viewfinder. Maybe I'll switch to the back camera.